Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Byte Behind Lego Train Automated Container Terminal. As you can see I have made some progress. Um, there are some changes though with respect to the uh, prototype that I built for the vertical movement. And uh, well the prototype right now is in a few parts. <laughs> as you can see as I needed the parts to build the, uh, the actual crane. Uh, what also is in parts by the way is this 90s set that I wanted to review. Uh, my four-year-old daughter decided to play with it and um, I was totally fine with that but I didn't know she could make a mess like that in uh, just a few minutes <laughs> so I need to uh, put it back together anyway back to the crane um, the prototype version had a PF motor inside because I didn't want to use a powered up motor since those are more expensive and um, I didn't want to install a powered up hub but I was totally wrong since the crane here for the movement like that and the movement like this which are quite large movements I need a powered up motor for that anyway so I needed to install a powered up hub too so that's why I decided to install a powered up motor also in this vertical unit instead of a PF motor so everything is now controlled by powered up motors um what else can i tell you yeah the cable system here there was a bit of a challenge well as you can see i made some pulleys that can ride along with the crane to uh to have some kind of cable management it's a bit of a, a problem was it and i more or less solved it now it's not totally fine but it works furthermore there's some uh sustainability going on since the waste heat of the voltage regulator is used to make a pizza <laughs> um, you might notice these blocks that you see here on the uh, these one are these ones are pretty visible those blocks are used to uh, catch the uh, catch the, the crane let's put it like that it moves all the way this unit for example moves all the way to the back it collides with this system here with this block and uh, it can't go any further and that is uh, detectable by the rotary encoder since the motor isn't turning anymore the rotary encoder isn't updated anymore and based on that i can detect that it's stalled and based on that i know it's on in its beginning position it's very important so i can reset the rotary encoder and start uh, working from zero now there was one thing I wanted to challenge myself in and that was a system that ramps up the speed and ramps down the speed of this unit so uh, when it starts moving you'll see that it nicely ramps up until a certain speed and when it encounters a certain point before it needs to stop it ramps down again well, it took me some time to figure it out it's a bit of basic math involved so what you see here on the axis here is um, the amount of distance that it needs to do and on the y axis here is the speed so what it basically does is it runs on low speed for just a while then it starts ramping up until speed max which here states 75 but I put it on 80 right now then it moves until a certain point on maximum speed and after that it ramps down again and the last bit is in slow uh, speed again to make sure it stops on the right position and it doesn't overshoot it, its position I noticed that there's a bit of inaccuracy in the whole system I don't know what the effect will be later on but for now it seems just fine also because of the reach of the system um, I only programmed this unit to go this in this direction the other units I still have to program and um, from the beginning to the end until the end is around 4200 degrees uh, you measure it in degrees because the rotor encoder just gives a signal like I've turned X degrees and so from the beginning until the end is 4200 and on that scale it has a uh, offset so now and then of 100 degrees which is fine for now I believe but maybe when you run it a bit uh, longer there's gonna be a, a larger offset I don't know 
So I have to reset the system a bit more. But we'll just have to see how that plays out. So I'm going to enable the system now. And what you'll see is it's starting to initialize itself first. Oh, need to enable the power up, of course. To the beginning position. And it's not, you'll see it's a bit not. One motor is going faster than the other motor needs to fix that. And there you see it ramping nicely up and down. That's basically what it does right now. <laughs> Let's see it one more time. And if you notice, uh, when it's initializing, it's also not completely straight on the uh, on the crane. And you can see that when it's initializing, when it's moving towards the end, which will happen when I reset the system, you'll see that there's a bit of an offset. I believe this side hits this block first and that side. And I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not. Maybe I have to adjust the speed of this motor, for example, by just 1% that it's running a bit slower. I don't know yet. I'll just have to figure it out. So let's reset the whole thing. Here we go. So le let's have a look at the corners and you'll see there's a difference. You see? That one was slower, that side. All right. Well, this system just works fine. Um, I'm now going to concentrate on moving the, uh, the X direction. This is for me the Y direction, X direction, Z direction. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on the X direction and the Z direction. I'm going to hook up a, a compressor right now. There's just an empty hose and the compressor. I still have to install the new pumps that I got from Lego. Uh, once I have done that, we can actually move some containers. So the next episode will be about moving containers. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And... Uh, Subscribe if you haven't done so and hope to see you next time. Bye